Hey, hey, welcome to my kitchen and to another baking show. It's been quite a while since I posted a baking video, so am I, I'm excited to do this. And this time it's going to be rhubarb custard pie. So my rhubarb is coming up, um, just nicely coming up, so I cut off quite a few stalks and decided to make some rhubarb custard. Rhubarb custard is one of my favorite pies made with rhubarb. I'm actually not that fond of rhubarb, but in the custard pie, it's really good. Hi, Chloe. Did you want to say hi? <laughs> okay, by the way, I want to give a shout out to all of you who have blessed me with some beautiful jewelry. This here is like a dragonfly necklace and a dragonfly earrings. Someone um, sent me these and some butterfly ones too. And some other person has sent me um, like some turquoise earrings and necklace. And another person sent me some <clears throat> some beautiful leather earrings that are different colored and you guys know what I like so thank you so much and bless you for doing that so what I have here is some rhubarb cut up I cut it up very finely and then I soaked it in really hot tap water for probably 10-15 minutes and that just kind of softens it up and takes some of the really tartness out of it so um, and then I drain it so that's what I usually do with the rhubarb, so I have it right here. And by the way, I'm making a double batch. This is just, the recipe is just for one pie. So if you see the recipe down below, it's only for one pie, but I'm making two pies. And in the recipe, it, it asks for only egg yolks, and then you beat up the egg whites for to make a meringue for the top of the pie. But I, I use the whole egg just to make it more custardy and I'm not that fond of meringue so we'll probably eat it with ice cream or whipped cream or something like that so I use the whole egg but you can use just the egg yolks and then the meringue then beat up the egg whites for the meringue if you want that so and there's sugar that goes in it and of course I use my Sucanat unrefined brown sugar and I always use less than it says and then I will add some stevia and erythritol blend I'll add some of this so that it's just a healthier pie <laughs> and then it also some butter and like a tablespoon of flour goes in it and a little bit of salt and then some rich milk it just says milk but I always I often use like an evaporated milk like this or I will use some half and half in the milk, something like that, just to make it a little richer. So let's get started. I'm gonna just mix it together and you can just come along and watch. And by the way, I did not bake my own pie crusts. I bought them because sometimes I'm in a hurry and I just don't have the time to make the crusts. So I bought them. Although, if you wanna know how I make the crusts, you can go and check out my cherry pie that I made quite a while ago, I think last spring or something. So as you can see, I'm mixing all the ingredients for the custard together. And then what I'll do is put in the rhubarb on the bottom of the pie shells. The pie shells are unbaked and I will just layer it in there nicely. And then I will pour the custard over it and just make so that it's nice and full. And then I'll stick it in the oven. I just love to have some simple recipes like this that are delicious but easy to make.
I got them in the oven. And for some reason, this recipe does not say um, what temperature to make it. But I'm going to put it at 450 for about 10 minutes and then 350 for the rest of the time. And I'm going to see how that turns out. And I'll let you know. Well, here they are. Just turned out beautiful. And you want it where it's maybe slightly jiggly in the center yet. That's, uh, that's the way I like it anyway. And out around is pretty firm, but it's slightly, you know, it jiggles slightly in the center. And what I ended up doing was I put it at 450 for uh, 10 minutes. And then I put it at 350 uh, probably for another 10 minutes and I noticed I thought these the crust was getting a little bit dark too fast so I turned it down to 325 so I would just put it down to 325 right away and probably bake about 40 minutes something like that okay these are ready and I'm gonna let them cool and I'm quickly gonna make a few other things for dinner and I'll show you also how to make some really good rhubarb drink, which I, we call it rhubarb aid, like lemonade. So we also make that throughout the summertime. It makes, it just makes a refreshing summer drink. I have this, these chicken legs marinating in um, olive oil, garlic, and salt and pepper. And then I went outside in the garden and got some chives and parsley and cut that up really finely and put it over here. And then also I put on some sweet basil. I chopped up a lot of sweet basil and right here it is. I'm growing some in the house so I've just been chopping some off every once in a while to use so that makes it really nice. So I'll be putting these on the grill soon and next I'll be making the salad and then I'll show you also how to make that rhubarb drink. So for my tossed salad, I just used some fresh spinach and sprouts and arugula that I just got down at our Amish farm to market store. We have someone from town that has a big produce patch. They're called um, Hural Farms and they bring in fresh veggies from there. So I am so spoiled, I can just get some from the store. Soon I will have some of my own um, lettuce and stuff from the garden but for right now I'm just using that from the store and then I will add tomatoes and some chives from my garden and also some hard-boiled eggs some feta cheese and some bacon bits So I have so much goat's milk on hand right now, so I am making some goat cottage cheese. And the way I make it is super simple. Um, I just heat it up to 195 degrees and then I uh, turn the burner off and I add some vinegar and that causes it to curdle. And then I'll strain it out and add some butter, a little bit of soda, and some salt and sometimes I add just a little bit of cream um, but I do have the full recipe for this in another video and it would be on our homestead happenings playlist you go on there and then you find the video that says organic goat's milk cottage cheese okay I'm ready to make this rhubarb drink for you 
and I chopped up quite a bit of rhubarb and just put it in here with some water and um, and then sometimes when I make this rhubarb aid, I will add some frozen raspberries or if I have fresh raspberries, I'll use that. Or sometimes I will just do straight rhubarb. Rhubarb and water and stevia and erythritol. But I like to add a little bit of um, raspberries or strawberries. It just gives it, it gives it a better flavor, I think. So I'm gonna add some frozen raspberries to the mix. And as you can see, I just chopped them up really big and coarse and then I'm gonna blend it all together. And then I will put it through this sieve so that all the berry seeds and the rhubarb uh, skin won't go through. So let's get started. I'm gonna blend this. And by the way, this is a Blendtec blender. It is really, really a really good t kind. And Blendtec actually gifted it to us. So it was a great blessing. Okay. Just do the last up now. Yeah. Okay, now I'll have Avalon put it through the sieve here, right here. Careful, Mama. Kind of push it through. So see here, this little bit of pulp I have left over. I'll just put this in the uh, compost pail. Erythritol and Stevia is called Sweet Blend. I get it on TrimHealthyMama.com. I'm gonna try three once and see if that's enough and if it isn't, I will add more. And this is very concentrated. I will be filling it up with water. Okay, I'm gonna let the children taste it for me. Tell me if it's sweet enough. Just a little bit, cause we're have we're having it for dinner. What do you think, Chloe? How does it taste? Good. Good. Yeah. What do you think, Wyatt? I don't know. Mm. You would put a little bit more sweetener in it? Um, what about you, Avalon? I think it's perfect. You think it's perfect. <laughs> okay, this is how you make rhubarb drink. Rhubarb aid but is mom, how we call it. Mom, mm -hmm. um, that's okay, awesome. <laughs> As I was showing you how to make the rhubarb aid, I forgot about my um, chicken out here, so the one side is pretty burnt, but I think it'll still be okay. They look really good on the one side. So they're almost ready. Joa should be home soon. And soon I'll show you how the pie tastes. But just look out here. The, it's just such a gloriously beautiful day in about 70 degrees out there. It's just beautiful, so, so beautiful. Just love it. 
Okay, we are ready for dinner. Babe, are you hungry? I'm really hungry and that chicken looks good and everything <laughs> that you made looks amazing. It's a little bit dark, but I think it'll be good anyways. And there is the cottage cheese. It turned out very well. It's the best. Oh, and that's a favorite. The salad. And also here I have some really good dinner rolls that I made yesterday. So kiddos, are you hungry? Yeah. <laughs> okay, in a, in a little while, we'll have dessert and we'll show you how the pie tastes then. Mm. Okay, I am gonna try this rhubarb pie. Let's see how it tastes. <laughs> Just like usual. Mm. What do you think, boys? Yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Chloe? Good. <laughs> good. How about you, Wyatt? I haven't even tasted it. I haven't <laughs> even tasted it yet. You're not sure if you like the ice cream on top of the pie, huh? <laughs> what about you, Abby girl? <clears throat> it tastes good. Does it? Alrighty. Mm. Okay, thanks again so much for watching. We love you and we bless you and we will see you in the next video.